Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, with the former world champion Zerg in the red, the Executioner. It's Rogue, up against a staple in StarCraft 2 history playing since 2010. We have Ryo, a best of three Terran vs Zerg showdown in a matchup that Rogue has rejected the meta and substituted his own, and he's ruined many, many Terran's days over the last few weeks, and whether you want to see him do it again, or find someone who can finally turn it around. Either way, I'd like you to turn your look just slightly down and smash that like button. And maybe, maybe even subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we at? 1,468 likes on this video, on this cast, and I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. I don't know what else I'd do with my life. But thank you for watching. Hopefully, you've had a good day so far, and hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better than these early Zerglings rogues put out to deal with the Reaper. The uh, will they, won't they, the dance back and forth that happens in 99% of games that there aren't more Reapers already on the way. And the Queen will be pushing it away. The Drode trying to sneak out. And Ryung, uh, not even going to bother trying to block the third Rogue, not rushing it out, making sure he has access to Zergling speed. He has the Queens out. There is an argument on both sides of it. You get your hatchery up quicker. One, it can't be delayed. You can get creep spread up. You get some of the larva from the hatchery. But for the quickest third hatch, you do have to delay uh, some of your drones, some of your additional queens in order to get those minerals a little bit quicker. So that puts you in, in sort of a thin situation where if you end up getting supply blocked or are forced to build a few extra zerglings, you're actually further behind than you would be uh, if you had taken a slightly later third. Um, but Rogue, I think, just doesn't want to deal with these early Terran shenanigans. Not that there's going to be much more to it. Behind it, uh, Ryong with the 111, the Destiny Cloud Fizz build, I think uh, I heard in a fever dream at some point. But uh, with access to all the basics, and by the basics, I mean the same build that both Ryong and almost every other Terran has been doing for 14 years which is Reactored Hellions and Banshees. Will there be Cloak? Indeed there will. An absolute classic. Keeps control of the creep. Uh, makes it so the Zerg can't get too greedy. If you don't have Spore Crawlers, you might lose the game. If you do have Spores, you're going to be mildly inconvenienced. Too moderately, depending on who's controlling the Banshees. Does he just go for it? There's already five Roaches on the way, creating a bit of an awkward scenario. Pokes in with the Reaper. But there's already... I, I like that due diligence there. Putting the, the creep tumor right on the top of the ramp. A lot of players will neglect that until maybe later on, if at all. Uh, not a roach all in, but enough roaches, enough sloaches, in order to discourage any sort of hellions early on. And maybe force a uh, significant amount of panic on the other side of the map. But the banshee? Yep, that's an overlord. Go get him, boys. Fly a little higher and shoot down. Nope, that's illegal. Can't do that. Go get them, boys. Rogue. A little supply block, but already more Ovi's on the way. Looking. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold. Looks like Ryong's gonna mech Terran great again. Mech. Here on Golden Ore. There's already a few roaches headed across, but the Banshees should make relatively quick work of it. This is something we haven't seen too much of. Well, in general, Mech has always been the red-headed stepchild that we pretend to actually like, but most people really don't uh, when it comes to Terran. The only people who really like Mech are other Terrans, but <clears throat> I digress. The roaches beset on all sides. That is a suspicious amount of Hellions. He's going to get a couple SCVs, but the sheer number of Hellions is concerning. As... There are 10 Hellions on the field. He's flipping on over. Is it going to be Armory or Sight? Hmm. Four Cyclones at a time. A last gasp before the new patch uh, of the spammable Cyclones, the wannabe Goliaths. He'll never be a Goliath. Right. And I, sorry. Now, the answer for Rogue is going to be very similar. A whole bunch of Roaches and maybe a few Ravagers mixed in. In the new patch, the Cyclones will also be potentially spammable, but much more expensive, a lot higher damage as well. More glass cannon. Rogue, on the other hand, is not dealing with it. He's got a Nidus network on the way. He's got 72 drones already mining at six and a half minutes as he takes his fourth. 
a booming economy right now. Though the one thing he doesn't have, neither player does, the upgrades. All right, we still got some stock units on all sides. Both players going for speed for their core unit composition, roaches and clones. Hellions, of course, pretty fast all on their own. The creep spread, I guess, could be considered a speed buff as well, and he's going to knock out some of that. The roaches. On the other side, the the um, vision blocker, the seaweed trees or whatever they are here. They kind of look like seaweed, but I don't think we're actually underwater on this map. At least based on the ragdolling physics. Very easy to tell if it's a changeling, considering right now there are no marines on the map for Ryung. As he's, he's soft countered the mass changeling style by simply not building marines. Thereby making it very easy to identify the traitors. And while the banshees get off my creep. Oh, you got it. You got him, Brenda. Ha. Susan. <clears throat> swarm hosts. Sir Richard and his band of swarm hosts, brethren, have been called into battle, not an accident like his mother said, but instead an a very intentional uh, part of the composition. And the swarm hosts, even against cyclones, which are a lot more mobile and hellions, well, that first wave is the most important. Ryug scans the main. There is no hive on the way. The swarm hosts have arrived in the first wave of locusts. Catches a very unlucky cyclone. He actually splits the locust, trying to maintain their relatively short lives to actually, to be a little more effective. The siege tanks will drag some fire. Another Nidus to the north side. The swarm hosts, uh, none of them dying in this exchange as he's able to pop right back in. And the momentum is now in Rogue's favor. Why am I not surprised he trades one? Well, lately we've seen him using changelings and locusts, so... Uh, Richard? Richard? Ah, what? We've arrived! <laughs> Instead of giving up this position to the one Banshee, the Queens come to the other side, almost knock out the Banshee, and clear the way. Slap down a couple creep tumors for extra flavor. And now we'll hold this spot as another uh, Anitis network comes in towards the western side of the map, but the locust wave, he are, wow, he just pre-lifts the orbital command and gets the SCVs out of there. Ryung is down 70 supply, which is only a little misleading, as at this stage, whoop, you can technically pop the queens out, wait, the queens are on the wrong side, but it's kind of a pain, because you have to like tab through a bunch of pages of things in order to pop the queens out, otherwise whatever goes in first comes out first which is remarkably analogous to many Zerg-related things and just general things biologically, but uh, that's how Nidus is, and to an extent, uh, fun fact, dropships as well. Well, Ryong trying to harden his shell. Rogue is at 68 drones, and that's very intentional, as this unit composition needs as much supply as it can get. 129 to 74, here come the roaches and ravagers. Rains down on top of the tanks, knocks out two. Planetary fortress holding the line, more siege tanks on the way. The roaches and ravagers getting slammed by siege tank fire. But Ryong is pushed back yet again. Meanwhile, Two Cyclones somehow snuck to the other side of the map. One brave Hellbat engaging in Nidus. And Rogue has almost cut all the way through the defenses. Ryung is making five siege tanks at a time. But he has made no progress in pushing back the Roaches and Ravagers. They're on his doorstep right now, breaking in. And uh, at this point, Ryung has no capability to tell him to get off my lawn. Another wave. Not a single swarm host has died, but they've dealt out plenty of death themselves. Drops it down on top of the tanks, knocks out two, almost three. The Roach Ravager helping out with some more as well. And Rogue loses a whole bunch of the Roach Ravager, but immediately replaces it. 14 more Roaches. Does he have the Hive done? He hasn't started a Hive. And if there is a single mistake that Rogue is making now, well, he might just kill him. In fact, it looks likely. But he hasn't started that high. And while these Cyclones are still working on the hatchery, clearly laser focused on ending the game before we can go any further. And I can't blame him against this sort of classical heavy metal mech style 
Another wave on the way. Ryong still with a surprisingly high amount of supply. But the Locust dropping down, drawing siege tank fire as friendly fire isn't. <sighs> wow, did an upgrade finish? I think he finished plus two ranged attack or plus two vehicle weapons as the siege tanks just obliterated the roaches. But how many does he have left? Only four siege tanks remain. Their command centers flying all over the place. I have no idea where they're going. Well, I have a good idea, actually. It's pretty easy to figure out where they're going, but it's kind of a, a, a figure of speech. Meanwhile, Rogue, still no hive. Just a, a downright refusal. It's not like he doesn't have the money. He could build 10 hives right now. But he's going to try to end it with the Swarm Host outright. Which is a bit of a liability. Now Ryung had a little bit of space to slip out some of the Blue Flame Hellions. And now roasting, incinerating drones at the third base. The Roaches come in to deal with it, but Rogue is down to 50 drones. Which is starting to get a... a we've gone from mild to moderate concern. The Hell Clones, instead of the Siege Tanks, are the choice. Combined with the planetary fire and the hellbat fire, much more literally, Ryong? Eh, it's not going well. But it is going. Now getting flyer attack, Rogue admits that Ryong has survived long enough to force a hive. Meanwhile, the swarm hosts are right there, just standing by confident the Roach Ravager will do enough to zone things out. And another wave of locusts will be queued up, and another wave will rain down, and another group of mech units will be ripped from the field. But uh, this time, Rogue a bit lazy on dropping it down. The Roach Ravager coming up. The planetary must hold. A wave of corrosive bile doesn't quite find the mark. The SCVs with the group hug to repair the planetary fortress. And more Hellions darting by. Knocking down Rogue's drone count again, down to 55. And, uh, getting it even more concerning. Now we've reached a legitimate concern. As Rogue doesn't have a massive bank, and he doesn't really have anything more to it. Vipers are going to be a huge step forward. No infestors or neural parasite on the way. He spotted another base. Rogue does have that bottom left corner gold base. But the siege tanks volley firing onto Roach Ravager as they work towards the third. Plus three, plus two for the siege tanks is nearly complete. Another wave of locusts is actually drawn out by the Hellions and isn't able to swoop down onto the tanks. So Ryung is slowly but surely grinding his way back into this as the Hellions find even more drones. Mm. Now, Ryung, originally on Team Slayers. And if there's anything I remember about uh, Team Slayers, notably Boxer, was Blue Flame Hellions infuriating Zerg players, especially American Zerg players. Okay, Hydra. Um, but I think one of my first casts ever, I don't know if I should recommend going back, but I put it out there now, was Slayers Boxer versus Hydra, where... I, uh, spoilers, Boxer kind of just kills all his drones with Blue Flame Hellions, and we called that a crazy good game back in the day. It's like seven minutes. <laughs> but still, what a strategy. And to this day, the Blue Flame Hellions still dangerous. But Rogue still has a bank. He's still... How many swarm hosts? He's lost a singular swarm host. There is just... an entire division of tanks here. Plus three is done. Where are the vipers rogue are they cloaked are they burrowed both of those would be what oh this is just spiteful muta what mutas instead of building like three vipers he's decided to do a muta switch which the anti-air is 13 site thing is the mutas are not necessarily an answer here. He does have plus two flyer attack. He's kind of been building up to this. But three two cyclones are not terrible. Rogue is we're gonna generously call it freeing up supply. The mutas are spotted. Eleven cyclones and twenty mutas at a time. What are we doing? 
What is this, mana battle? 19 more mutas! Rogue! Is, has decided he's winning this with swarm hosts and mutas. And if he has to touch an energy bar that isn't connected to a queen or an overseer, he just doesn't want to participate at all. Well, the cyclones are fighting heads up, but that armor upgrade is... At, uh, I mean, the armor is incredibly good. It helps mitigate so much of that uh, bounce damage from the mutas. And Rogue is broke. But he has 18 mutas in the mail right now. And they're about to be delivered. 20. He has plus three flyer attack. I can't even remember the last time I saw that for something that wasn't Broodlords. What? It feels like this is a time capsule game. I am reasonably sure, based on the fact we were able to load it on the current patch, that it wasn't played in 2016. But you could have fooled me. Meanwhile, Swarm House. Coming in for another round. Here come the Thors. The Swarm Hosts still have only lost three throughout all this. He still wasn't able to close the distance. So Ryong was pushed back to his side of the map yet again. The engineering base, somewhat ironically, will die before completing building armor. The Swarm Host still hanging out. I like how they're just... They're just waiting menacingly. Typical group project. D not even trying to look busy. I I'm incubating. Oh, all right. Richard. Kind of a dick. <clears throat> it's hard work. Thor's growing in number. He's got two of them. Three more on the way. Five cyclones at a time. Amuda's still sharking around. And I'm becoming more and more convinced Rogue just has decided he's going to play without infestors and vipers. There it goes. Wait, well... Uh, with building armor, he would have saved it. Unfortunate. But 3-3 three, three is done now. For the mech army. Ryong may have one more all-out attack. What a game, by the way. Just relentless. Except uh, it's been the swarm host to mute a siege. Oh, uh, hey! Oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Pop back into the Nidus at the first side of trouble. Hellions come in. Gonna roast a few more drones. And only two hits to kill him with that plus three weapons upgrade. But the Mutas with plus three flyer attack. Actually ripping through the buildings rather easily. Oh yeah, Roach Ravager's back for more. Another wave. We're into them. A very dead siege tank. And Ryung's running out of real estate. The main base is beset by Mutas. The third base by Swarm Hosts. The extended fourth by Roach Ravager. There's enough army across the board. Rogue's at 146 army supply. That is a lot of Zerg to contend with, even if some of it's in Swarm Host, which Rogue has made so much use of. Ryong is just... The thing is, if one of these... One of these waves of Locusts, if one of these... Oh! <laughs> If one of these waves of Mutas, or Roach Ravager, just was botched, if he threw it into the siege tanks or the Thors like we had a taste of there, then Ryung might be able to just death ball his way across the map as those plus three Thors immediately causing the Mutas to spontaneously combust when they get anywhere nearby with that splash damage. The, the Siege Tanks doing terrible, terrible damage to the Road Ravager. He retargets the Siege Tanks to make sure they don't do friendly fire. Two tanks are taken down, but Ryung, I don't think it's going to get any better. He has to go yet again. And uh, his chances are not much better than they were the last time. He does have the anti-air, but the Siege Tank count is reduced to a single one. Amutus, driven back by the Cyclones, but another base on the run. Eight clones, the Octo clone production. Anitis in the main. Ryung. Where's that? What is even the objective now? The swarm host yet again. It's endless. Wave after wave. A tower defense game here for Ryung, but unfortunately his towers are flying away as opposed to holding the line. The orbital command is dead. The Cyclones try to chase it down. Ryung has managed to keep quite a supply count. 
In fact, this is about as good. He has 32 Cyclones. And this is it. I think finally he has 32 SCVs left. There, he's building two siege tanks at a time. The, the biggest danger for this army is how unwieldy it is. The Cyclones, he could repair them. He barely has any SCVs to repair with, potentially, and not that much money either. Clearly not a priority at the moment. But Rogue has no gas, so... Mm, corrosive Bile, the hefty, hefty Thors are really having a tough time dodging it. But now, bringing the Swarm Host together. A wave of Locusts to try to break the mech army. Ryung actually backing off as the Locusts drop down to the siege tanks, knocking out a whole bunch of the Roach Ravager. The Locust wave has been mostly mitigated, as Ryung did a good job of holding it. He might get a Thor here. Well, that's a lot of damage. He gets the Thor. That's unfortunate. But this mech death ball... Rogue is still maxed. He's making some zerglings. That's how broke he is. Sprays out the corrosive bile like a particularly rowdy frat party. And now... The siege tank's still trying to find a target. There's a dream. But another wave of locusts is coming up. Rogue is still mining from the other side of the map. Ryung? No. Oh, the Roach Ravager. He's... He's... Like a pirouetting elephant here with the Thors. The Locusts are raining down again. And the, the Cyclones have thinned out dramatically. He drops down on the siege tanks. And still moving forward. Somehow Ryung still surviving. The Swarm Host, he's still only lost three of them. But it keeps feeling... Oh, the Zergling counterattack. Ryung now has no income. He has no money. This army, not beaten, but just ground down. And in fact, Ryung will tap out before Rogue has an opportunity to actually stop him. After 130 roaches, nearly 60 mutas, but only three swarm hosts, 94 cyclones, and 33 siege tanks. What a match. A heavyweight bout there. As both players kind of making it, it feels like a conscious decision to effectively skip the uh, kind of uh, spellcaster, the ghosts, the ranged liberators, the vipers, the infestors, and just brawl it out. With the swarm host into muta, come on, rogue. That is not the most effective way to win the game but in terms of emotional damage i think that's a bit of a critical hit the, the mutas were clearly not the best call but they were the most fun call i think every true zerg player wants to go mutas i'm entirely biased and it's just my opinion the right opinion but Every Zerg player at some point wants to either switch or just end up with Mutas. It's just rarely the best call and almost as rarely a good one. And in that case, that could have backfired dramatically. Rogue very well could have lost track of it for just a few seconds, lost all the Mutas, and then Ryung's push wins the game especially with no vipers to contest it but what a brawl watching those siege tanks obliterate the roach ravager but at the same time the swarm host used is that kind of tactical smothering not a single one of the waves did like critical damage but they just did not let up not in the same way in heart of the swarm of course where heart of the swarm host meant infinite locusts no they are a conscious and active decision now that really benefits from smart usage and uh is a massive detriment to those who don't going swarm host with no plan except to throw out one locust wave and hope for the best is the easiest way to lose two minutes from now you get one minute to build the swarm host and then throw out the locust wave 
And then you probably get counterattacked and die after panicking and sending out another wave and desperately trying to break their army. I, I just hypothetically, I would never, that, that's never happened to me. Overlord speed. No trust is what. Overlord speed is quite a choice. The way Scarlet described Overlord speed is spending a hundred gas to make sure you die to whatever you scout, as opposed to guessing what you'll die to. Because spending a hundred gas, wow, he even lost a drum. Spending a hundred gas at this stage of the game does feel um, like quite an economic hit, considering that is your second 100. Oh my God, he loses it. Did he loot? Well, not only did he spend a hundred gas on the Overlord, but he also lost it to Marines anyways, which is bad. <laughs> well, that is clearly not the best use of speed, Ovis. It, it, it doesn't make them invulnerable. To, I'm so fast they can't hit me. You're literally a flying hot air balloon, bro. <laughs> Ryung's going to pump fake uh, interference matrix here. Upgrade in order to make it look very good. Oh, yeah, I'm totally going cloak banshee. Yeah, 100%. Nope, cancels it. <laughs> so rogue. He's expecting shenanigans out of out of Rion. And what he's getting is the most standard Terran you could ever get. He's actually just gonna skip Cloak because honestly, it already served its purpose. He's already built Overlord Speed. He's gonna build Spores. If there is no Cloak, you probably don't need Spores. Queens will get the job done, but you also can't take the risk they go Cloak because then you lose the game. If, um, the Manchies hit the right spot, so. Well, Ryung. No mech this time. Unfortunate, but not unexpected. As, uh, instead opting for the Rax, he's a bit bio-curious, it seems, as still has plenty of Hellions and Banshees. But it will be the Marines and the Stim upgrade as well. Though only the Stim upgrade so far. Just the one racks building up. Rogue, no Roach Warren. It's going to be Baneling Nest, double Evo Chamber. So far, uh, so standard. Plus one, plus one on the way. Rion going to have a slight advantage there as Rogue prioritizing the drone count, getting his Evo Chambers a little bit later. What's he going to do, though? Oh. <laughs> the drone comes down, sees the Banshees. Well, I think the Overlord saw the Banshees. Team effort. But, uh... Now going for the fourth. There's the Bane speed. Hellions. Roasting some of the creep tumors. Almost gets the fourth base. Doing a great job of maximizing that damage. Do the thing. Really? No. Right. Okay. Not quite well. Hmm. Yes, but also no. <laughs> that is not exactly how you do that, but the idea was there. Banshees come back in, but the queens? That's enough, and you stay out. We don't like your card around here, Terrence. What? What is that accent, Brenda? Um, distinguished. Okay. <laughs> Rogue blocked his own base, so he kills his own creep tuber to open it up. I actually lose as a heli. Meanwhile, no other tech doesn't even have an infestation pit. No. Rogue is, again, kind of locking himself into a unit composition. Feels like we're going to have a very principled series here, with both these players deciding what they want and executing it no matter what their opponent is throwing at them. So Rogue is going to have a lot of Lings and Banes. And he's going to follow that up with even more Lings and Banes. Whereas Ryung has Marines, Medivacs, and Matanks as well. So the M and M and M. And 
a good old fashioned Saren versus Zerg tug of war. This time around, I think Ryung going to be a, a little more active on the map as without swarm hosts launching at his bases the moment he moves out, he has a much better chance to uh, at least assert a little bit of map control. All right, fighting over the center line. Ryung will have a 2-2 advantage. And I'm sure he'll recognize that. Spotting for the Marines. Yeah, I'm sure he's clicked on the Lings and Banes as well. Rogue has 1,100 minerals in the bank. And no larva. And 1,100 gas as well. Which, how many macro hatches? He's getting an infestation pit. Finally. But he literally cannot spend his money at the moment. Two macro hatches in the main. He's going to have like six or seven hatches overall. But Ryung is nearly maxed out at nine minutes with 2-2 two, two closing in. So this is a very dangerous timing for Rogue. He's not going to have the upgrades. And a maxed out marine tank army with better upgrades against someone on just Ling Bane. Well... He hasn't been able to slow this down at all. The pre-split is already there. He's clearing the creep. He's already in range of the fourth hatchery. And Ryung with some very uh, methodical splits before this all gets started. Right now, 100 Zerglings, 76 Banelings. And Ryung is pretty stacked up here. There's a lot of siege tanks. 2-2 Two -two isn't done yet. Banelings roll in. 79 banelings. That is so many banelings. But a hatchery already goes down. 2-2 Two -two gonna finish 8 seconds, 5 seconds. The longer Rogue waits. And the moment it finishes is when Rogue will pull the trigger on the attack. But splitting back, banelings roll in from the south side. He's gonna pull all the way back. That's so many banes. The siege tank still getting a lot of damage done. And Ryung splits are perfectly acceptable. He's able to mitigate the damage dramatically, and he continues to move forward. The Banshees are back in action. He stims the Marines and Marauders again, and the Banelings are morphing at point-blank range, but he might be able to grind through the third base. There's no follow-up to this for Rogue. He doesn't have anything else but Lings and Banes, and this time around, I don't think it's going to be enough. The Marines on the high ground. The splits are good. He's able to gun them down before they even get close. The Queen's trying to help out, but the reinforcements are streaming across the map. The upgrades are too damn good. And right now, the Zerglings and Banelings are not remotely enough. Ryung strikes back with a classic Marine tank timing. With solid execution, he's able to execute the Executioner. And now, it looks like Rogue gonna have to go back to the spawning pool and maybe rethink uh the tech choices in that game I feel like with game one this has been a spiteful story. does he have something does does rogue dislike Rio? that's my question because it feels like he's trying to beat him on challenge mode right now we all know rogue is very capable of dismantling a terran player he's beaten clem okay uh recently like not six years ago like last month a couple weeks ago so, he's very capable of playing the full game. So why? I think it's spite. Ryung maybe looked at him the wrong way in 2012, and he's had it out for him ever since. I wouldn't be surprised. And now, here we are in game three, all tied up. And it's going to be a pool first with gas. Mm, the combo meal. Is this roaches? I don't know. It's so rare we see a straight up pull first. Uh, and if it is a pull first, rarely with gas. Um, usually just some zerglings to kind of redirect the tempo of the game. But here we are. Zergling speed. Still two out of three in gas. Hmm. 
interesting and somewhat confusing. He's clearly... Uh, is he trying to hide the Zerglings? The, the pool timing is scouted by the SCV. As in, he scouted the hatchery isn't done, and that gives it away. The Reaper back at home, clearly intending on blocking in or blocking out any of the Zerglings. But Ryung didn't send the SCV into the main. He didn't see the gas. And nothing about this is really given away by that. So, well, he's going to see the Zerglings now. If he thinks this is just a gasless pool first, then the Zerglings could do real damage on the other side, even a handful of them. Assuming you fit like four in your hand. Eh, probably not. <clears throat> Reaper doing some uh, pull-ups. The Zergling speed about to complete. He's going to try to dive in to the main. He wants to... The moment... Oh, the door shuts in his face! And don't come back! Though he may lose two SCVs, but it could be a lot worse. The Zerglings get in, they likely kill the Marines and delay the rest of the production. But thankfully for Ryung, the, uh, he's on the right side of the map to have the add-ons on the right side in order to wall off without exposing uh, his main. So, Rogue's Gambit doesn't quite pay off, though I don't think uh, it's going to set him back too much. Does he go for the creep tumors? Brenda bounce. Really? Goes for two. The Zerglings have speed already done. And... Young man! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you get your revenge, Brenda? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Use your words. No. Very good. Sorry, I uh, blacked out for... Roachorn's on the way. How many gases for Rogue? Just two. So, mostly defensive here. Cloak Banshee's all the choice. Roach one's all done. Does he have any larva saved up? No. Just a whole bunch of drones on the way. Zerglings. Spotting. Overlord as well. Lair has begun. And the queens will push away. And those early Hellions. It's going to be bio this time yet again. Not going to try the mech. It was a great effort, but it did seem like Rogue was in control of the situation the whole time. Even though Ryung got remarkably close to turning it around. I think that was partially just Rogue on his crusade against spellcasters, or maybe Ryung, or possibly both. Uh, as opposed to uh, being quite a strong unit composition. Banshee gets a drone, but definitely not exactly the haul it was looking for. Rogue, not too many drones ahead now, especially considering Ryung now has that third base. He's going to deny some of the creep tumors. Creep unsurprisingly a little delayed because of that uh, pool first strategy four more gas gassers on the way looks like rogue's gonna go for a, a hammer build here where you just max out with roaches and rat but he starts an infestation pit so that overseer um, this is awkward well that was that was just very poor timing I don't <laughs> Don't know what he expected to happen. He saw the Overseer morphing. Literally right there. Maybe it was so obvious he failed to see it. It happened. Hydra is dead on the way. Looking more and more like a lurker rush. I think Rogue may have been anticipating Mac again. But now, he sees the Marine Count. And instead of going swarm house, is angling towards hydras and lurkers. Though this will open up a, a an opportunity for Ryung to hit another time. That window is much smaller than the previous game, though. As 
the upgrades are actually slightly ahead for Rogue with his missile attacks and carapace. And the hive will be done by the time 2 2 even comes along. So. We'll see how Ryung decides to hand. Ooh, a convincing changeling. You want a piece of meat, boys? No, I'm vegan. That's an interesting choice considering the. Co The drop's loaded up. I think he tried to load the changeling into a medevac and realized, uh, well, the traitor in his midst. Meanwhile, the medevacs, uh, roaches, just now finishing speed, will box it out. Second factory already on the way. Lurker den, halfway done. Hive, nearly completed. So lurkers are the choice. And for Ryung, it's going to be mass siege tanks. Groove spines completed. Two vipers. Oh, he wants to win. I see. Rogue has decided that he's not going to leave this series to chance, but instead is going to lock it down. He's not pulling any punches this time. Lurkers with range. Oh, Ryung forgot combat shield. Oh, no. The most commonly forgotten yet obviously important upgrade even more than adrenal glands which rogue has not forgotten combat shield enters production my god those changelings are so convincing another one hey guys has he noticed the other one somehow no <laughs> hey guys no wait wait for me i'm co i'm coming hey Meanwhile, Zerglings able to take out some of the Marines. Get a siege tank. Actually, I think the siege tank helped out more with that one. Rogue getting his laundry list of hive tech, but the lurkers are already on the field. There's no way you can contest that like this. Parasitic Bomb coats both medevacs, and he may have done enough damage to one in order to kill it off. Yo! Oh, no! Oh, the Marines were pounded on the door. But it implodes with all hands. Oh, it's a disaster. Ryung still has a lot of supply. But the tech advantage is all rogues right now. He has the hydras. He has the upgrades. It appears he's happy to just lock this down. And maybe head to the oversight committee. We will see. Yeah. That l and don't come back! Lurker. Angrily staring. Oh my god, these changelings. The changelings don't get combat shield when it finishes. The new changelings will. But the old ones, not so much. Not that they grow very old at all. Ghosts on the way. Parasitic bomb volley again. Where are you going? That's a disaster. Oh my. Oh, that was, that was not good. That was, that, mm. Mm. This is not going well for Ryung. He's getting his bell Ryung right now. Rogue is eviscerating Marines. He's slapping medevacs out of the sky. The Nidus will be shut down for now. Look at those beautiful sensor tower placements. Just beautiful. Coincentric circles covering near perfectly. And here comes the committee. It has convened 13 overseers now. Completing. Bringing him to a total of uh, 14. It doesn't even seem like rogue cares about Ryung getting a fourth he's probably just going to try to smash the fifth base but so far this looks more like bullying than a, a back and forth battle if Ryung moves out at all oh my there goes the medevac he's got a great army very technically he's got 
Uh, 11 siege tanks, 9 ghosts. But now he's got... Uh, wait, is that 3 nidus? He's got 3 nidus's in his main. And now the lurkers are popping out every which way. Oh, it's an absolute disaster. Oh my. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Does he have cloak for the ghosts? He does not. This... It's bad. 23 over six. Oh, yeah, he hates Rion. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable calling it here. 23 overlords in production. That's what Rogue has decided on. No Spire, no Ultra Cavern. 23 more overlords. Oh, my. There's the Spire, though. And some more Nidus's. Turning this into a full on campaign mission. So, finally, Cloak completes, which means... Oh my god, instead of backing off, is he... How did he fight? Oh, one of the ghosts ran out of energy. They're not... I, I, it's bad. It's real bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you gonna do, stim the marines and attack? Don't do it. I guess that would expedite the conclusion of this game. Did he build the over- Oh yeah, he's up to 37. Oh, bro. Oh no. No, oh god. <laughs> he just pops him back into the dives. Uh-huh. The committee meeting is uh, fully in swing. Blinding clouds. Yanks in another tank. Get over here. He is surgically, well, like a surgeon with a chainsaw, dismantling him, and a harpoon. The roaches that he's trying to throw away are doing actual damage. <sighs> the changelings are blocking the path. There's another couple Nidus's in the main. It truly feels like Rogue now is just liking the way he dies. Oh no. At no point has Ryung had any chance to really turn this around. This is not game one, or obviously game two. Rogue has decided to uh, take the gloves off. And, well. The changelings are blocking the exit. Papers, please! I don't... Oh my. This is more one-sided than a Mobius strip. This is... This is cyberbullying. Rogue. He's dead. He's dead. He's at 170 supply. In fact, Ryug has 20 more army supply. Yet, somehow, he's dead. The screams of unlimited Nidus's. There's just changelings everywhere. Oh my, and it, the, the changelings... I'm pretty sure the changelings are doing more harm than good. So Ryung is is taking his shot here. Oh my. Oh, those lurkers. Does he just not have any? He only has two orbitals. The lurkers eviscerated another 30 supply before he had a scan. The dregs of the army. Whatever's left. Oh no. Well. The overseers are blocking. JJ. All right, Rogue, but from, that's going to be it. <laughs> wow. Not too many times does it feel like someone was truly playing with their food. But here, Rogue just had a three-course meal and dessert tasted extra good. Wow. 
Rogue just slapping Ryung around in game three after a couple suspiciously close battles. I don't know how I feel about that one, but it was quite a demonstration of that roguelike style that we've come to know and maybe have strong feelings about. I'm not going to go with love, but Ryung gets decisively dismantled in game three and rogue takes it home with a comfortable victory two to one so hopefully you enjoy yeah, no matter your feelings about it certainly a demonstration of strong zerg versus terror and ryung with some original mech play as well uh and still going strong despite being one of the oldest players maybe feeling it a bit after that one but uh thank you for watching if you got the means of motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. So I hope I made your day just a little bit better. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.